Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Today I was walking through Walmart and I found this. And no, I'm not excited about it because it's some kind of a dad water bottle or something. It is solid aluminum all the way down. And most importantly, it was on sale for $1. So we're going to take this today and try to make an awesome alcohol stove. Thanks for watching. So the first thing we need to do is measure a distance, or any distance from here to here. This is the length or the, the height of our stove is going to be. Now, since this is going to set at the bottom, okay, we want to bring it up high enough that we get, I would say, at least half an inch of this flat part so that when we compress it in, it'll get a good seal. We probably won't even have to use any JB weld or anything. So kind of looking at it. Just get yourself a couple pieces of wood like this, okay? And just come up with it with a height. Now this is the height that I'm gonna use. And the way I do it is I use my Sharpie and I just keep on the flat on the flat table. Yeah, very flat. And just take time. You will create a mark all the way around, just like that. Now you can get a ruler and you can measure this out. But I find the easiest way to do it is everybody's different, so just grab yourself a piece of blue tape, okay, and mark it across or just lay it across right here. Now you know that one side is obviously going to be right here. So we'll put a mark. And I know that my mark is gonna be right in the middle of that black. And then we come over to this side and we mark right on the bottom, okay? Just like that. And now we can take this off and bring it over to this side, okay? Put that mark right there. And knowing that because of the curvature, okay, we are going to have a little bit less room, so we want to actually mark it just underneath, just underneath this mark. And that is pretty close. And if you have to angle it a little bit, as long as you keep your angle, so I can keep my angle right there. And that looks really good. So now, if you can see, okay, we're going to have this here cut off, flip it around, and smush it into over here. Along here, we're going to have to make marks and lines for our jets. So let's do that next. And again, we're going to use tape to make that happen. If you have narrower blue tape, it will probably work better. I do not. Now you do want to put a mark just right here. Okay, you can see that, just a regular mark. You can see where that black mark is. So I'll just get this and I'll mark it on this side right there. So whenever you take this off, okay, and you unwrap it, you have a piece of blue tape with two marks, okay? One there and one there. So I like doing this about a half inch apart. Let's see how that will work. And actually that's gonna work out well because you can see, so we'll have one hole here. I'm just going to go along marking every half inch. You can see where it basically is right on there. So now we know that if we wrap this around our bottle, we can drill holes and that's going to give us the location for our jets. And all you want to do is just wrap this around kind of as straight as you can. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and straight, but it is nice to have it as straight as you can. Now it is best and very much advisable to drill all your holes in this before you do any cutting. And we're also going to notch out the bottom here. I'm going to show you all that next. Let's head over to the workshop and we're going to drill these holes out. We're going to notch this out and then we're going to figure out how best to cut this thing. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. What I like is a V-shaped file. You just find yourself, this is aluminum so you can easily fall through it. You just have to get it started. If you haven't figured out what we're doing, we're creating these notches, okay? And what these notches will do is allow a place for the alcohol to come through and then go up towards the jets here. Now your tendency might be to drill these holes with something fairly large. I use the smallest drill bit I have, which is a 1 16th inch bit.
perfectly spaced. See, this is basically like a, just a thick aluminum can. So we're through there. There's our two pieces and you can see how they're going to fit together. We're going to press fit those together here in a second. All right, so now for the moment of truth, right? We need to smush this on here in a consistent way. And what I'm going to do is use my jaws here, my press. And it's really important that you do this gently. If you do, it will work very well. It looks to me to be well seated right there. So I'm just going to start going real slowly. You can see it bunching up really nice. Let's see how it looks at the bottom. Looks pretty good. Actually, we're going to try something. I want to push this in farther. So let me see if I can find something that will go here and we'll push it in farther and then we can just trim off the top. Okay, so got a piece of two by four, just cut a circle and we're gonna use it. And I should be going down about an eighth of an inch. So if I put this in here, okay, and if I feel it go in just a little bit, I know that I'm pretty much where I need to be. I don't need to go far and I don't wanna force it too much. That should do it right there, folks. Now I am seated at the bottom there and you can see, so I'll get my snips and I'll come right around, cut right around here and we'll have an absolutely perfect seam. Now I'll be honest with y'all, I can't be more excited about how this turned out. It looks super professional. It looks off of an assembly line, really. I encourage you guys to do this. Of course, I haven't turned it on yet. I'm being a little presumptuous that it's gonna work, but it should work. So let's do a quick weight. This is obviously going to weigh a little bit more than some of the other ones because it's a stouter. So one and three fourths ounces or 50 grams. Still pretty darn good. One and three fourths ounces, 50 grams. All right, well, I tell you guys, I am super happy with how this turned out. I'm going to get some mineral spirits and just get this paint off and polish it up nice. This is the best. Um, alcohol stove I've ever made. The biggest thing you want to look for is um, an aluminum bottle like that. Again, it came with this on top, if you can find one. It was marked $5, but when I bought it, or sorry, it was marked $5, it was down to $1, like I said. Cut it very carefully, drill your holes, and you can make this one and three quarter, was it one and three quarter ounce stove, 50 grams, really, really good. What makes this, I think, a little bit better than some of the other stoves is this thing is bomb proof. I mean, it is, yeah, I, I can I can smash it as hard as I want. I don't think it's going to come apart. It's just really well put together, and the gauge of the aluminum is a little certainly thicker than an aluminum can, and it gives this tremendous strength. So I hope you guys like this uh, stove. I'm really happy with it. If you do like it, please like, comment, subscribe. All those things really help the channel. I'm going to do a video soon on comparing this with the Trangia, with the cat can stove, and with a smaller version of this that I have a video on that may or may not already be out, depends on what uh, order I put these in, made out of a Sprite bottle that's much thinner aluminum. Hope this inspires y'all to go out and build something. This took me about an hour to make. It went together really, really well and exactly the way I thought it would. So thanks for watching. Look forward to more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.